Okay, so today we're going to do the opening prayers and then we're going to go into the Oma Home Purification Practice and do that uh, in its entirety. Of, so everybody gets practice with this. This is the Buddha Practice 201 session that we do on Sunday. So we'll start with that. Last time we had to kind of squeeze it in at the end uh, because we had a very interesting conversation that was going on. But this time we'll start with the practice. Then we'll go into the uh, King of Aspiration prayers and we can have discussion about that as we move along. So if everybody has your 101 prayer book that has the prayers in it, and if you've got your um, uh, King of Aspiration prayers uh, handy, that'll be good. So we'll begin with the opening prayers. Uh, does anyone volunteer to do the opening prayers? Well... I'm still not ready to do the um, Tibetan, but I'll, I'll be certainly happy to read the English. All right, fine. Why don't you do that? So read the English three times will be fine. Okay. This is the altruistic motivation. Yeah, so everybody recite along with uh, Mark, but keep your microphones off. All mother sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and omniscience. May they experience happiness, be separated from suffering, and swiftly I will establish them in the state of unsurpassed, perfect, complete, and precious Buddhahood. All mother sentient beings, especially those whose enemies, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and omniscience. May they experience happiness, be separated from suffering, and swiftly I will establish them in the state of unsurpassed, perfect, complete, and precious Buddhahood. The Action Bodhicitta Prayer. Thus, until I achieve enlightenment, I perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. Until death, I perform these virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. From now until this time tomorrow, I perform, perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. The Long Refuge Prayer. We take refuge in the kind, root and lineage lamas. We take refuge in the deities of the mandalas of the Yidams. We take refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. We take refuge in the perfect Dharma. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. We take refuge in all the noble Dakas, Dakinis and Dharma guardians, possessors of the eye of wisdom. We take refuge in the kind root and lineage Lamas, we take refuge in the deities of the mandalas of the Yidams. We take refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. We take refuge in the perfect Dharma. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. We take refuge in all the noble Dakas, Dakinis, and Dharma guardians, possessors of the eye of wisdom. Taking the Bodhicitta vow. Until I attain the heart of enlightenment, I take refuge in the Buddhas. I take refuge in the Dharma and likewise in the assembly of the Bodhicittas, or Bodhisattvas, rather. As the previous Buddhas embraced the enlightened mind and progressed on the Bodhisattva's path, I too, for the benefit of all sentient beings, give birth to Bodhicitta and apply myself to accomplish the stages of the path. Until I attain the heart of enlightenment, I take refuge in all the Buddhas. I take refuge in the Dharma and likewise in the assembly of the Bodhisattvas. As the previous Buddhas embraced and enlightened at the enlightened mind, I progressed on the Bodhisattva's path. I too, for the benefit of all sentient beings, give birth to Bodhicitta 
and apply myself to accomplish the stages of the path. The short refuge prayer. In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha most excellent, I take refuge until enlightenment is reached. By the merit of generosity and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha most excellent, I take refuge until enlightenment is reached. By the merit of generosity and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. The Four Immeasurables. May all mother sentient beings, boundless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. May all mother sentient beings, boundless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. Uh, let's see. Uh, recite the hundred syllable purification. Oh, yes, mantra. I'm sorry. Recite that once in English, and then I'll come on and I'll recite it in the um, Sanskrit. Very excellent. This is the hundred syllable purification mantra of Vajrasattva. Om Vajrasattva Samaya. Help to protect my vow and purify myself. May you attain firm with me, or may you re remain firm with me. Grant me the complete satisfaction. Grow with me, be loving toward me. Grant me the attainment to master the powers beyond body and nature. Show me all the deeds of body, speech, and mind. Make my mind, my mind heart good, virtuous, and auspicious. Revel in the bliss of the four joys, O blessed one, who embodies the essence within me. Do not abandon me. Grant me the realizations of the indestructible nature. Make me one with you. Thus I signify my unity with non-duality. Ah. Om Bajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bajra Sattva Teno Pa Drista Dredo Me Bawa Suto Kayo Me Bawa Supo Kayo Me Bawa Anu Raktu Me Bawa Sara Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sara Karma Sitsa Me Sitsan Sri Akuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sara Tada Gata Bajra Mame Munsa Bajri Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ha Om Bajra Sattva Samaya Manu Palaya Bajra Sattva Teno Pa Me Bhava Suto Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anu Raktu Me Bhava Sara Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sara Karma Sitsa Me Sitsan Sri Akuru Hong Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sara Tada Gata Bajra Mame Mansa Bajri Bhava Maha Samaya Sattva Ha and now, Lance, which are we doing next? Page 12. You recite that, please. Is that the seven limb prayer? My pages are different than yours. Okay. You want me to do the seven limb prayer? Yes, please. That'll be good. Seven okay. limb prayer. I bow down respectfully with my body, speech, and faithful mind 
to all Tathagatas in the Ten Directions. Those who have already reached the Tathagata state, those who are reaching it at present, and those Tathagatas still to come. Through the power of the Samantabhadra's prayers, may all the Buddhas manifest vividly in my mind. I prostrate to them, multiplying my body as many times as there are atoms of the earth. In each atom, I visualize as many Buddhas as there are atoms surrounded by countless bodhisattvas. Thus, all space is filled with Buddhas and bodhisattvas. I praise all Buddhas through magnificent chanting, expressing the great ocean of their excellent qualities. Offerings. To all Buddhas, I make offerings of various pure flowers, flower garlands, of music, anointing oils, magnificent light, and fragrant incense. I make offerings to them of fine garments, perfume and potpourri, piled high as Mount Meru, and arranged in the most beautiful way. I visualize the highest and most extensive offerings and offer them with great faith to all Buddhas. I prostrate to the Buddhas and make offerings to them following the deeds of the great Bodhisattva Samantahabra. Confession. I confess to all Buddhas whatever negative actions I have committed due to the power of anger, desire, and ignorance. Rejoice. I rejoice in the merit of all Buddhas in the ten directions of the great Bodhisattvas and Pratya Buddhas, Buddhas who have attained our hardship, those who have entered the path of a, hot, a hardship, and all other beings. Requesting. I request all great protectors and Buddhas to turn the highest level of the Dharma as the light dispelling the darkness of the beings in the ten directions and lead them to gradually to the enlightened state. Supplication. I supplicate those Buddhas intending to pass into para nirvana and live long for as many eons as there are atoms of the earth in order to benefit all beings. Dedication. Whatever merit I have gathered through prostrations, offerings, confessions, rejoicing, beseeching and praying for the sake of the enlightenment of all sentient beings, all this I dedicate. Uh, what's next, Lance? The next page, the Sagari Mati Requested Sutra. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Likewise, be extinguished. Extinguish all enemies to my purpose. Whatever evil forces are in me, be defeated. Do this so that when I am victorious, all pure radiance melts into me completely purified. Take all this knowledge, food, and drink peacefully. Enjoy it and be satisfied so that all obstacles may be destroyed. Be liberated from all obstacles, all general obstacles. Maras are defeated by this gesture of the Buddha. By, recruit, by reciting this mantra, may all the Maras be defeated. As a result, may all the Maras be... Excuse me. By reciting this mantra... May all the Maras be purified. As a result, may all the Maras be defeated. Where am okay. I going, Lance? Uh, we're, we're finished with the opening prayer, so thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so does anybody have any questions or comments about anything that we've talked about so far? Anything that you'd like to be talking about that we haven't talked about? Okay. Then uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to do the purification practice that's on page 23 of the uh, 101 prayer book. So you don't need to look at it. I will recite it and lead you through the meditation. We're going to do a, a, a practice a recitation of the mantra and uh, meditation. 
So I will talk you through it, but if you want to refer to the book, uh, by all means, go right ahead. Um, this is a practice that you can do on your own. Uh, you can do this at home, wherever. Um, so it's a very good practice for purifying our body, speech, and mind, and then purifying the body, speech, and mind of all beings, and, uh, and then dissolving into the emptiness, into the shunyata. So, um, so please have a comfortable seat uh, in the meditation position, if you possibly can, sitting on a cushion uh, with your legs crossed, your back straight is the most important part, and your hands at your uh, navel uh, in the meditation position, and your eyes open or closed just to gaze, and your chin down just a little bit. So it's an active, this is an active practice. So we're going to be reciting um, this mantra, Om Ah Hung, many times. So if you've got your beads, uh, you might want to have your beads with you. It's very good. <clears throat> okay. So please sit in the position, be calm. First, we visualize a white om at our forehead and a red ah at the throat and a blue hung at your heart. Recite the mantra, om ah hung. So if you need to refer to the book to see the images of these three syllables, you can do that. If it's better for you to visualize the English, uh, om ah hung, that's fine. But it should be a white om, a red ah, and a blue hung. So now we continue. At the first mal around is recited, a white fire emanates from the forehead, from the om at the forehead, and burns away all physical obscurations, all the sickness, negative karma, and bodily obscurations are consumed by the wisdom fire of the Om. So now we do the recitation. Om ah hum, Om ah hum, Om ah hum, Om ah hum, Om ah hum. Now I need everybody to do this. Okay. So if you don't follow the melody, that's fine. Just do Om Ah Hong with no melody, that's fine. But the whole point of this session is that we're participating in the practice. Om Ah Hong, Om Ah Hong, Om Ah Hong, Om Ah Hong, Om Ah Hong. Om ah hong, Om ah hong, Om ah hong, Om ah hong. Om ah hong, Om ah hong, Om ah hong, Om ah hong. Oh, my home. 
and hold it. Exhale and hold it. Now this is a practice that uses the body, the speech, and the mind. We are engaging our physical body through the recitation of the mantra. We're using our lungs, we're using our vocal cords, etc. And then we are sitting in a meditative posture where our back is straight, our hands are in the meditative position. We're using all the energy of our, our body in order to focus on the meaning of the mantra, of the purpose of the mantra. Intellectually, we're focusing on the meaning of the mantra. So we're thinking that this, in this case, the white fire is coming from the forehead that is purifying all our bodily illnesses, all our, our injuries, all our uh, confusions of the body, our, our difficulties of the body, the illnesses and so on are being purified by this white light. That, so the, the mind, the brain is thinking about that, focusing hard on that, nothing else. The mind wanders, we bring it back to that visualization. And then it's like a key, those two energies coming together is like a key that opens up our heart. And the heart is the, the mind, the big mind. So this is what we are trying to get to. So this is the process of doing this. This is a process that is ancient, goes back thousands and thousands of years before even the Buddhism goes into ancient India and other traditions of practices for, for many, 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 many years. So uh, this is the process to be able to do this, to get the maximum benefit. So now we do the second recitation. It says, during the recitation of the second mal around, a red fire emanates from the red ah at the throat and burns away all the obscurations, all the blockages and negative karma that were made through our speech, all the negativity of our speech, whether to ourselves, to other beings, purified through this red fire coming from our, our throat as we recite the mantra. Om Ahum O ma hum, 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 O ma hum. O ma hum, 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 O ma Oh, 
おまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおまほんおま
Omahum, 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 Omahum. Omahum, 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 Omahum. Take a deep breath and hold it. Exhale and hold it. Okay, breathe normal. Now, during the third Mallow round, a blue fire emerges from the blue hung at the heart and envelops the entire body in a single blue flame. All the negative karma and obscurations of the mind are consumed and burned away. So visualize from the heart this single blue flame engulfing the whole body. Bring your hands, put them up over your head like this. And visualize that this is the flame and your body is in the flame, burning away all the negative karma, all the blockages of the mind. We recite this mantra. Om Ahum. O Mahon, 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 O Oh, my home. 
Om Ahum, Om Ahum, Om Ahum. Om Ahum, Om Ahum, Om Ahum. Om Ahum, 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 Om Ahum. Om Ahum, 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 Om Ahum. Om Ahum, 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 Om Ahum. Take a deep breath and hold it. Exhale and hold it. Relax, breathe normal, keep your back straight. Remember the translation of the Sanskrit word mantra is mind protection. When we are reciting mantra, when we're doing it correctly, when we're committed to the, the mantra, all that we can think about is the object of the mantra. So in this case, it's purification of the body, speech, and mind. So without the commitment, without the actual experience of doing this, there's no benefit or very small benefit. To maximize the benefit is to do the practice with a commitment properly. So now, during the fourth mala round, the three colored lights from the three syllables, the white om, the red ah, and the blue hung, radiate in all directions, fully purifying the outer universe and freeing all sentient beings from suffering and its causes. So 
So we can visualize the white om at our forehead, the red ah at our throat, the blue hung at our heart now, going out in all directions and combining with each other's lights. We may be far apart in terms of miles, but our vibration is instantaneous and in one place. We are all together now. We can bring our lights together. And right now, there are many, many, many other people who are reciting mantra. And it might be different mantra, but they are generating these lights. And they are all coming together. And then we're sending all these lights. These lights are all radiating out to all sentient beings, purifying the body, speech, and mind of all sentient beings. So this is the visualization of this mal around om ahum 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 om Om Ahum, 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 Oh, 
Om 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 and hold it. Exhale. Stay relaxed and breathe normal, keeping your back straight. So now the dissolution. So after this last mala recitation, this last mantra recitation, we visualize the white om at our forehead dissolves into the red ah at our throat. And the red ah dissolves into the blue hum at the heart. And the hum rises up from the bottom, disappearing, disappearing slowly, slowly from the bottom to the top into the emptiness, the shunyata, phenomenal nature. And then we just relax, rest the mind without investigation or discrimination and be aware. The meditation, the dissolution meditation. Get a glimpse of the nature of the mind and meditate in that state. So we visualize the white om at the forehead, the red ah at the throat, the blue hung at the heart, and each dissolving into each other, into the hung syllable, rising up from the bottom, disappearing, becoming invisible in the emptiness, in the shunyata. Om Ahum, Om Ahum, Om Ahum, Om Ahum. 
and hold it. Exhale. Keep your back straight. Stay in the meditation position. Close your eyes if you wish. Open your eyes into a gaze if you wish. Maintain the meditation position. Visualize the white om dissolving into the red ah, the red ah dissolves into the blue hung. The blue hung rises from the bottom to the top, becoming invisible into the emptiness. Your mind becoming liberated and free. Catch a glimpse of the nature of the mind and meditate in that state. We'll do a single 15 minute meditation. If your mind wanders, bring it back to the dissolution. The Om Ahom dissolving into the emptiness. need to move your body position, do what you need to do to remain comfortable. Keep your back straight. And commit to the meditation.
Take a deep breath and hold it. Exhale, hold it. Open your eyes. Now we do dedication. So Mark, you are the Umze today. So please, on the Daikorma prayer on page 20, recite that, please. Everybody recite along with Mark. Turn your microphone on, Mark. The microphone popped off again. Dorje Chong, Tilopa, Naropa, Marpa, Milarepa, Dharma Lord Gampopo, Gampopa, Fagmo Drupa and Lord Drikunga, please bestow on us the most auspicious blessings of all the Kagyu Lamas. By this virtue may I achieve the all-knowing state. May all who travel on the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara by defeating all enemies, confusion, the cause of suffering. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind, where it is unborn, may it arise. Where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase higher and higher. I pray that the Lama may have good health. I pray that the Lama may have long life. I pray that your Dharma activities spread far and wide. I pray that I may not be separated from you. As Man Jushri, the warrior, realized the ultimate state, as did Samantabhadra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. By the blessings of the Buddha who attained the three kayas, by the blessing of the truth of the unchanging Dharma as such, by the blessing of the indivisible Sangha order, may the merit I share bear fruit. Oh, we're, oh, I'm sorry. By the virtues collected in the three times by myself and all beings in samsara and nirvana, and by the innate root of nature, may I and all sentient beings quickly attain unsurpassed, perfect, complete, and fresh enlightenment. May the teachings of the great Drikungpa Ratnashri who is omniscient, Lord of the Dharma, Master of Interdependence, continue and increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Om. Ah. Uh, om. Om. Ah. Uh, om. Om. Ah. Uh, May my body, speech, and mind be inseparable with the body, speech, and mind of all the enlightened ones for the benefit of all sentient beings. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let's take a break now. And... Uh, We'll come back and resume our conversation about the king of uh, Samadhi. So let's come back at uh, in 20 minutes or so, at uh, 10 minutes to the hour. So for some of us, it's it will be 10 minutes to 11. Some of us will be 10 minutes to 10. So any questions? We can talk about the practice after the break. Thank you. See you all soon. Thank you. You're welcome.
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I do you want me to start over? Would you like me to start over? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, three times the charm. King King of Aspiration Prayers. Samatabhadra's Aspiration of Good Actions, Sangochu Manlam, from the Ganya Vayu chapter of the Avatama Sakya Sutra. Translator's homage. Homage to Manjushri the Youthful. The seven preliminaries for purifying the mind. One, prostration. To all Buddhas, the lines of the human race, and all directions of the universe through past and present and future, to every single one of you, I bow in homage. Devotion fills my body, speech, and mind through the power of this prayer, aspiring to do good action. All the victorious ones appear vivid here before my mind, and I multiply my body as many times as atoms in the universe, each one bowing in prostration to all the Buddhas. Offering, and every atom preside as many Buddhas as there are atoms, and around them all their bodhisattvas heirs, and so I imagine them filling completely the entire space of reality. Saluting them with an endless ocean of praise, with the sounds of an ocean of different melodies, I sing of the Buddhas, noble qualities, and praise all those who have gone to perfect bliss. To every Buddha, I make offerings of the loveliest flowers, of beautiful garlands, of music and perfumed ointments, the best of parasols, the brightest lamps and finest incense. To every Buddha, I make offerings, exquisite garments, and the most fragrant accents, powdered incense heaped as high as Mount Moreau, arranged in perfect symmetry. Then the vast and unsurpassed offerings inspired by my devotion. That's it. Thank you. Oh, that's not on my page. My page one and still has a paragraph. All right, sorry. Well, then it goes to page two, I think. Do you want me to, so mine is off. Do you want me to keep reading or not? No, I would prefer that uh, Karina start reading. Okay. Then as a vast and unsurpassable offering inspired by my devotion to all the Buddhas and moved by the power in my faith, in good action, I prospered and offer to all you victorious ones. Confession, whatever negative act I have committed while driven by desire, hatred, and ignorance with my body, my speech, and also with my mind. Before you, I confess all purify each and every atom, rejoicing. With your heart full of delight, I rejoice at all the merit of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Pratika Buddhas, those in training and the arhats beyond training, and every living being, thousand, uh, throughout the entire universe. Imploring the Buddhas to turn the real Dharma, you who are like beacons of light shining through the world, who passes through the stages of enlightenment to attain Buddhahood, freedom from all. I exhort you, all of you protectors, turn the unsurpassable wheel of Dharma, requesting the Buddhas not to enter Nirvana, joining my palms together, I pray, do you will intend to pass into nirvana, remain for in as many as uh, atoms in the world, and bring well beings and happiness to all beings? Dedication. What little virtue I have gotten throughout my homage, through offering, confession, and rejoicing, through exhortation and prayer. All of it I dedicate to the enlightenment of all beings. The actual aspiration. Aspiration for purity of attitude. Let offerings be made to Buddhas of the past and all who now dwell throughout the ten directions of this universe. Let all who are yet to come swiftly fulfill their wishes and attain the stages of enlightenment and Buddhahood. Let as many worlds as there are in all the ten directions transform into realms that are vast and utterly pure, 
filled with Buddhas who have sat before the mighty Bodhi tree around them and all their Bodhisattva sons and daughters. Let as many sentient beings as there are in all the 10 directions live always and forever in happiness and health. Let all beings meet the Dharma that befits them best. And so may all, may all they hope for be fulfilled. Aspirations never to forget the bodhicitta. As I practice the training for enlightenment, may I recall all my previous births and in successive lives through deaths and rebirth, may I always renounce the worldly life. Training in the footsteps of all the victorious Buddhas, may I bring good actions to perfection and my moral conduct be taintless and pure, never lapsing and always free from fault. In the language of the gods, nagas and yaksas, in the language of demons and of humans too, in however many kinds of speech there may be, I shall proclaim the Dharma in the language of all. Taming my mind and striving in the paramitas, I will never forget the bodhicitta. May all my harmful actions and the obscurations they cause be completely purified, every single one. Aspiration to be free from defilements. May I be freed from karma, harmful emotions, and the work of negativity, and act for all beings in the world. Just like the lotus flower to which mud and water cannot cling, or sun and moon that course unhindered through the sky. Aspiration to lead beings to happiness. Throughout the reach and range of the entire universe, I shall pacify completely the suffering of all the lower realms. I shall lead all beings to happiness and work for the ultimate benefit of each and every one. Aspiration to wear the armor of dedication. I shall bring enlightenment action to perfection, serve beings as to suit their needs, teach them to accomplish good actions, and to continue this throughout all the eons to come. Aspiration to accompany other bodhisattvas, May I always meet and be accompanied by those whose actions accord with mine, and in body, speech, and mind as well. May our actions and aspirations always be one. Aspiration to have virtuous teachers and to please them. May I always meet spiritual friends who long to be of true help to me, and who teach me the good actions. Never will I disappoint them. Aspiration to see the Buddhas and serve them in person. May I always behold the Buddhas here before my eyes and bring around them all their bodhisattva sons and daughters without ever tiring throughout all the eons to come. May the offerings I make them be endless and vast. Aspiration to keep the Dharma thriving. May I maintain the sacred teachings of the Buddhas and cause enlightened action to appear. May I train to perfection in good actions and practice these in every age to come. Aspiration to acquire inexhaustible treasures. Um, and I don't know when to stop reading because my pages are off. So I'm on page four right now, in the middle of page four. As I wander through all states of samsaric existence, may I gather inexhaustible merit and wisdom, and so become an inexhaustible treasure of noble qualities of skill and discernment, samadhi and liberation. Aspiration to do different methods for entering into the good actions, seeing a, sing the Buddhas in their pure realms. In a single atom, may I see as many pure realms as atoms in the universe, and in each realm, Buddhas beyond all imagining encircled by their bodhisattvas heirs. Along with them, may I perform the actions of enlightenment. And so in each direction everywhere, and even on the tip of a hair, may I see an ocean of Buddhas, all to come in past, present, and future in an ocean of pure realms. And throughout an ocean of eons, may I enter into enlightened action in each and every one. B, listening to the speech of Buddhas, each single word of a Buddha speech, that voice with its ocean of qualities, bears all the purity of the speech of all the Buddhas, sounds that harmonize with the minds of all living beings, may I always be engaged with the speech of the Buddhas. C, hearing the turning of the wheel of Dharma, with all the present powers of, sorry, with all the powers of mind, 
May I hear and realize the inexhaustible melody of the teachings spoken by all the Buddhas of past, present, and future as they turn the wheels of Dharma. D. Entering into all eons, just as the wisdom of the Buddhas penetrates all future eons, so may I to then them know them instantly, and in each fraction of an instant may I know, and that will ever be in present, past, present, and future. You want to stop? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Then we go to the next, uh, go to Karina. Entering into all the eyes, just as the wisdom of the Buddhas penetrates all future ones, so may I took know them instantly. And in a fraction of an instant, may I know all that will ever be in past, present, and future. Seeing all the Buddhas in one instant. In an instance, may I behold all those who are the lions of the human race, the Buddhas of past, present, and future. F. Entering the sphere of activity of the Buddhas, may I always be engaged, engaged in the Buddha's way of life and action through the power of liberation where all is Release it as like an illusion, accomplishing and entering the pure vent on a single atom. May I actually bring about the entire array of pure reliance and past, present, and future, and they enter into those pure Buddha's reliance and each atom and I each in every direction entering into the presence of Buddhas. When those who illuminate the world still to come, gradually attain Buddhahood, turn the wheel of Dharma, and demonstrate the final profound peace of Nirvana, may I be always in the pre presence. Aspiration of the power of enlightenment throughout nine power. Through the power of swift miracles, the power of the vehicle like a doorway, the power of conduct that possesses all victorious qualities, the power of love and kindness, all pervasive, the power of merit that are totally, uh, <clears throat> that is totally virtuous, the power of wisdom free from attachment and the power of knowledge, skillful means and samadhi, may I perfectly accomplish the power of enlightenment. As patient to the antidote that pacify the obscurations, may I purify the power of karma, destroy the power of harmful emotion, render negativity utterly powerless and perfect, the power of God's action. Aspiration to the enlightened activities. I shall purify oceans of realms, liberate oceans of sentient beings, understand oceans of dharma, realize oceans of wisdom, perfect oceans of actions, fulfill oceans of aspiration, serve oceans of Buddhas, and perform these without ever growing weary through oceans of eons. Aspiration for training. To emulate the Buddhas, all the Buddhas throughout the whole of time, attained enlightenment through good actions and their prayers and aspiration for enlightened actions. May I fulfill them all completely. B. To emulate the Bodhisattvas, Samantabhadra, the eldest of the sons of all the Buddhas, is called Samanta Bhadra, all good, so that I may act with skill like his, I dedicate fully all these merits. To purify my body, my speech, and my mind as well, to purify my actions in all realms, may I be the equal of Samanta Bhadra and in his skill and good dedication. Manjushri, in order to perform the full virtue of good actions, I shall, according to Manjushri's prayer and aspiration, and without ever growing weary in all those eons to come, 
I shall perfectly fulfill every one of his aims. Concluding aspiration. Let my bodhisattva acts be beyond measure. Let my enlightened qualities be measureless too. Keeping to this immeasurable activity, may I accomplish all the miraculous powers of enlightenment. Extent of the aspiration. Sentient beings are limitless as the boundless expanse of space. So shall my prayers of aspiration for them be as limitless as their karma and harmful emotions. The benefits of making aspirations. The benefits of making aspirations in general. Whoever hears this king of dedication prayers and yearns for supreme enlightenment, who even once arouses faith, will gain true measure, merit greater still. Then by offering the victorious Buddhas infinite pure realms in every direction, all ornamented with jewels, or offering them all the highest joys of gods and humans, for as many eons as there are atoms in those realms. The 13 benefits in detail. Whosoever truly makes this aspiration of good actions will never again be reborn in the lower realms. They will be free from harmful companions and soon behold the Buddha of boundless light. They will acquire all kinds of benefits and live in happiness. Even in this present life, all will go well, and before long, they will become just like Samatabhadra. All negative acts, even the five of immediate retribution, Whatever they have committed in the grip of ignorance will soon be completely purified if they recite this aspiration of good actions. They will possess perfect wisdom, beauty, and excellent signs, be born in a good family, and with radiant appearance. Demons and heretics will never harm them, and all three worlds will honor them with offerings. They will quickly go beneath the Bodhi tree, and there they will sit to benefit all sentient beings, then awaken into enlightenment, turn the wheel of Dharma, and tame Mara with all his hordes. Three, the benefits in brief. The full result of keeping teaching or reading this prayer of aspirations of good actions is known to the Buddhas alone. Have no doubt, supreme enlightenment will be yours. Dedication of the merits of this notorious aspiration. One, dedication that follows the Bodhisattvas. Just as the Bodhisattva of Manjushri attained omniscience and Samatabhadra too, all these merits now I dedicate to train and follow in their footsteps. Two, dedication that follows the Buddhas. As all the victorious Buddhas of past, present, and future, praise dedication is supreme, so now I dedicate all these roots of virtue for all beings to perfect good actions. Three, dedication towards actualizing the result. When it's time for me to die, let all the obscures me fade away so I look at Amitabha there in person and go at once to his pure land of Sukhavati. Do I keep reading? I My page is... No, it's one more, one more stanza. Okay. And that pure land may actualize every single one of all these aspirations, may I fulfill them each and every one, and bring help to bring beings for as long as the universe remains. Dedication towards receiving... Uh prophecy from the Buddhas. Born they in a beautiful lotus flower in that excellent and joy, joyous Buddha realms. Uh, may the Buddha's Amitabha himself grant me the prophecy for retelling my enlightenment, dedication towards serving others. Having received the prophecy there with my billions of emanations sent out through the power of my mind, may I bring enormous benefit of sentient beings in all the ten directions. Conclusion, uh, through whatever small virtues I have gotten it by receiving this aspiration of God action, may the victorious wishes of all, all, all beings, prayers, and aspirations all be instantly accomplished. Through the true and boundless merit attained by dedica dedication at uh, these aspirations of good action, may all those uh, now drawing in the ocean of suffering reach the supreme elements of Amitabha. May, king, may this king of aspiration bring about the supreme arm, the benefit of all infinity sentient beings. May the perfect word I describe it in this holy prayer uttered by Samantha Bhattam. May the lover 
relevance be empty emptiness end of prayer words of true to accomplish aspiration by the blessing of the buddhas who have attained the three kayas and the unhanging true of reality as well as the unwavering aspiration of the sangha may all the aspiration of dedication prayer be fulfilled rigra translation 1996 what's our house Very good. Thank you, everybody. Does anybody have any comments or questions about the King of Aspiration prayers? The aspiration of good actions? Okay. Well, where we left off last time was on my page four here, and that was uh, in between uh, number six and number seven, where the heading on number seven says aspiration to have virtuous teachers and to please them. Everybody with me on this? Okay. Zara, you got your place? Okay. Sorry, were you talking to me? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just asking oh. if you had your place where we were. Yeah, sorry. My my internet is coming in and out. Hold on one second. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, on page four, yes. Okay, thank you. So um, the, the aspiration to have virtuous teachers and to please them. May I always meet spiritual friends who long to be of true help to me and who teach me the good actions. Never will I disappoint them. So what this means is that we learn from everybody. We learn from every situation. Everybody can be our teacher. Everybody can be our spiritual teacher. And for us who is aware of this, they may not be aware of it, but for us who are aware of it, we can also recognize that we are teachers. So that everything that we say and do can have a reaction with other people, can be a cause for their karma. So we need to safeguard what we say and do. We need to process what other people are telling us and to be open to it. I know many times, you know, you can meet a five-year-old kid and the five-year-old kid will, will say something that is wise way beyond his years, you know, but we recognize that. Whether he recognized it or not doesn't make a difference but it just resonates with us that something may be going on in our mind that we recognize from what they say, and we consider that person to be a spiritual friend. <clears throat> so formally, when we have spiritual friends, spiritual teachers, we have respect for them, and we do everything we can to honor their instructions, to honor their, um, their um, uh, admonitions, uh, to honor their um, affirmations that they give to us and realize that, that they are indeed our friends and it is an expression of their compassion, their compassion. They may have accomplished things that liberates them to whatever degree they can be liberated, but then they choose to re-engage with other people, people who may need the teachings that they offer because of their compassion. They've accomplished it. They don't need it anymore. They don't need the teaching anymore. You know, but they are taking the time, making the effort to present this to other beings and so on. So this is a great gift. And we look at that as as those teach the good actions and never will I disappoint them. So um, I know that may be a hard thing to do sometimes. But um, we may not agree with our teachers. But the wise thing to do if we don't agree is to bring it up and talk with it about the teachers. Why? What doubts do we have? What confusions do we have? Let's discuss it. Let's understand. Maybe the teacher has it wrong. 
maybe the teacher is expressing it in a way that is offensive to you or other people. So do it with compassion, do it with loving kindness, and the teacher will not be offended. The teacher will be very happy. So, um, so that's what we do with the aspiration to have virtuous teachers and to please them. The teachers are trying everything they can to be virtuous. Those Dharma teachers are trying to be virtuous. That is their motivation. That is their intention. So no doubt about that. <clears throat> the next uh, line, eight, is aspiration to see the Buddhas and serve them in person. May I always behold the Buddhas here before my eyes, and around them all their bodhisattvas, sons and daughters. Without ever tiring, throughout all the eons to come, may the offerings I make them be endless and vast. So how literal should we take this? How literal are we actually going to meet Buddhas and so on? If we look at everyone, as a Buddha, at least as a potential Buddha, and we see that potentiality, there's no error, because we know that everybody has that Buddha nature within themselves. So we give them that grace, we give them that honor to be able to do that. Now, we find that some most people are, are not the Buddha that we would like them to be, that they may like to be, that they have the potential, but they're not living up to the potential. But if we look at their surroundings, they look at what they have available to them, and we respect that and so on, is a good mindfulness practice to be able to keep yourself virtuous and pure. The opposite would be that you're looking at people and you're thinking the worst of them. You're thinking, oh, this person is, is not very useful to me, not useful to anybody else, and I can be nasty to them. I, I don't have to respect them or, or something, and, um, and it doesn't matter because I recognize their faults, and I see that they, they don't have, they're not living up to their Buddha nature. So I disregard them. But that has a lot of suffering involved there, suffering for yourself that you are driving a wedge between you and other people instead of maybe trying to help other people. So this brings the third way in being able to recognize the Buddha, that you recognize the Buddha within yourself that never goes away, that is indestructible. And you may not be able to uh, truly appreciate the totality of that Buddha nature within yourself, because you haven't gotten to that level. But there may be other levels. You may come to uh, recognize the, the Dakinis within yourself. You may come to recognize the Bodhisattvas within yourself. You may come to recognize that you are a practitioner, that you are a hearer, a Pratyaka, uh, Pratyaka Buddha. So there are levels that, that we can see within ourselves that are speaking to these other spiritual beings that are on the path to become Buddha. So this is our path. We are the one that is on the path. We are those bodhisattvas. We are those yogis and yoginis. We are them. So we respect that. And so in order for us to be able to uh, deal with other people, whether they are true Buddhas or whether they are potential Buddhas, that we do that with the way in which we think or know that the, the Buddha would do that, a holy enlightened being would do that. So this is what we've been learning, all these different activities of the holy enlightened ones. We're learning how to do this. That's what this, this king of aspiration prayers is, is a way to aspire to become enlightened. So it's spelled out for us here in this one prayer. That's why this is the king of aspiration prayers. There's many, 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 many aspiration prayers. But this is the king of them all because it is so concise and so complete. It doesn't go off into a lot of details and so on. It's very concise. It's really, if we pay attention and, and study and contemplate this as a meditation, it will open up to us. 
So we'll begin to recognize how, what motivations that we need, what aspirations we need to be able to do this. So this is the aspiration to see the Buddhas and to serve them in person. That everything that we do, you know, with other beings, whether we regard them as Buddhas, whether we regard them as potential Buddhas, we're, we're showing our Buddha nature in order to be able to do that. The next one is the number nine, is the aspiration to keep the Dharma thriving. May I maintain the sacred teachings of the Buddha and cause enlightened activity to appear. May I train to perfection in good actions and practice these in every age to come. So, this is one of the qualities of a bodhisattva. This is one of the qualities of of the four no, of the of the um, excuse me of the um, I can't think of it right now. Um, when we talk about uh, the qualities of the bodhisattva, of an enlightened being, that they are always engaged in the Dharma teachings, that they are uh, living it themselves, and that they are bringing it to other beings. So may I maintain the sacred teachings of the Buddhas to whatever degree we have learned it, and may I cause enlightened action to appear. May I cause enlightened action to appear through my actions, through what it is that I do, and maybe indirectly by those things that we uh, motivate other people to do, that we inspire other people to do. May I train to perfection in good actions. So may I take these teachings and may I train them, may I transform my behavior my conduct and lift it up into this pure conduct, into this pure behavior and so on. May I train in this, we have to do this. And this also is, we fail many times. So we have to forgive ourselves and we have to move on, make the corrections that are necessary and try never to do these things again. So this is the four powers of of Vajrasattva, when we recognize that we did something bad, we make amends for it, we resolve not to do it again, and we rely on the practices to keep us pure. This is why we do the practices over and over again. You know, we can learn some techniques about meditation and so on, about calming ourselves down, calming down our emotions and so on. But if we're not training in them and being able to do them all the time, we're missing the point of why all these things are there. So the loving kindness is learning all this. This is the wisdom of learning what it is that we need to do. The compassion is the method of expressing this, of being able to do that. So it's two sides of the same hand. The, the two sides of the same hand bring us to enlightenment. But if you're only practicing one side of the, the hand, it doesn't do very good. In other words, you can have compassion for people, for their suffering, but you're not giving them good advice or you're not helping them in the ways that they need to be helped. And um, so, that, or you're giving them the wrong information. You're giving them wrong stuff. You're, you're, telling, you're, you're telling them things that maybe you don't really know instead of saying, well, I don't know, and you need to talk to somebody else about this. So that you may have compassion for them, but what you're showing them is, is negative stuff, is, is non-virtuous stuff. So you have to be aware of that. We need to have the wisdom. We need to have the compassion, the method. So aspiration to keep the Dharma thriving. And I practice these in every age to come. So however many lifetimes we have, you know, that's one of the things to that is very liberating that, you know, we're, we're many of us, we're taught that this is our one and only life. And maybe in this human form, that's, that is true, like it is. But there, there are our, our spirit, if you will, will have many, many lives. We've had many lives to get to this point. We will have many lives after this and many opportunities to purify ourselves further and further and further. 
And what the Dharma teaches us is to recognize what it is that we need to purify, how to purify it, and then to have the result in, the, in our next life. Our next life may be something as simple as tomorrow. We can have a meditation practice. We can have a teaching practice right now. And we can learn things. We can understand things. We can turn around our, uh, our, our knowledge and say that, oh, well, I've been looking at this in the wrong way. And now I'm going to do it in the, the correct way. And then when you get up off the cushion and continue to go out, now that's like being reborn. And now you, whatever negativity you're leaving behind, and you've transformed that into now this wisdom and compassion, this, this method that you now have. So it can be uh, many lifetimes in front of us in physical bodies and physical form, or it can be just us in this body, the way that we change. We, we change our intellect, the way we change our physical body, how we take care of our physical body and how we take care of our heart center, our spirituality and so on, keeping, keeping the, the spiritual door open. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions, comments? Is this making some sense? Is this useful? Okay. So then we come to 10. And uh, just to put this into uh, perspective, what we are uh, learning here, what we are speaking about is the actual aspiration. So all this is all part of the actual aspiration. What are we aspiring to? So each one of these points here is what it is that we are aspiring to to be free from defilements, to lead beings to happiness, to wear the armor of dedication, to uh, accompany other bodhisattvas. Those were points that we talked about last week. And this week we talked about the aspiration to have virtuous teachers and to please them, the aspiration to see Buddhas and serve them in purpose, in person the aspiration to keep the Dharma thriving. So these bullet points, these numbered points here, are, are very precise about what should our aspiration be. If you don't know, refer to this. If you're not doing this, refer to this. It'll either give you a, a, a confirmation that you are doing the right thing, an affirmation that what you've been doing is correct. But it also may be saying, oh, well, you know, you're not doing this correctly. So using this text as a guide on a regular basis is will put us on the path and keep us on the path to our enlightenment. So now we come to number 10, the aspiration to acquire inexhaustible treasure. As I wander through all states of samsaric existence, May I gather inexhaustible merit and wisdom, and so become an inexhaustible treasury of noble qualities, of skill and discernment, samadhi and liberation. So, is this physical treasures? Is this the money in the bank that you have? Is this the investments that you've made? Is, is this what we're talking about, this material treasures? Or are we talking about spiritual treasures? We're talking about um, the inexhaustible merit and wisdom from having uh, practice uh, by having studied, by having contemplated, by having done a meditation. And all of us have done this to some degree to get to where we are. You didn't get here by accident. You're all good people. Nobody here has committed the, the five um, uh, heinous crimes of killing and of lying and of stealing sexual misconduct and so on like that. I mean, those are good things. And, and you've done those things. You've done those things from the beginning because you, you've had these seeds of good karma from the time that you were conceived through the time that you were born and, and now your whole life. So whether you've lived to be 20 years old or 30 years old or 50 years old or 
70 or 80 years old, whatever it is, you've been maintaining this, this virtual, this virtuous uh, behavior and so on. So this inexhaustible treasure of these good deeds, you see, of this merit and this wisdom, uh, as I gather this inexhaustible merit and wisdom, and so become an inexhaustible treasury of noble qualities. So we are like noble people, you know, accept that, respect that, you know, oh, yes, you know, but don't become arrogant about it. Yes, I have understood many things. I can wander through the states of samsaric existence. I can go through this life, this phenomenal nature, this, this ocean of suffering, but I have the armor of this merit and wisdom. This isn't affecting me in the way maybe that it used to, and definitely the way that it affects other people. So we recognize that. So I become an inexhaustible treasury of noble qualities that I have these qualities and you be respectful of that. You treat them with respect, without arrogance, and you, you dispense them, you show them, you use them in ways that are very subtle that people may not recognize, but you know that you're doing it. You begin to recognize what your virtuous nature is of skill and discernment. Samadhi and liberation, skill and discernment, the way in which we do these things. So when we talked about the 10 non-virtues and the 10 virtues, so the 10 virtues are spelling out, you know, what, what we do uh, with our body, speech, and mind to be continue to be virtuous. And we're warned of what the non-virtues are. So we can use this to recognize our non-virtues. We can recognize it to see others' non-virtues. And maybe you have to use your wisdom, but maybe you can engage with that person or people and try and help them to recognize what they have been doing in non-virtuous and be able to show them the virtuous way to be able to overcome those things. Now that takes wisdom, that takes skill, that takes skillful means and so on. So um, we uh, engage in that slowly, slowly. And if we find that we're making a mistake, then maybe we can back off, you know, we can and, and make it a heart transmission from our heart to their heart, you know, and not try and, and elaborate too much intellectually that is going to confuse them or give them the wrong impressions, the wrong ideas, and so on. So we have to test that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing that if, you're mo if your motivation is pure. But if you see that it's not working, you need to just back up. You find a, a graceful way to, to back up and, and then uh, use the, the heart transmission. So it says of skill and discernment. And then samadhi and liberation. So the samadhi is the mind of the Mahamudra, is the mind of peace, the mind of the Buddha. And we work up to that. I've sent you all the teachings of samadhi. I gave that to you some time ago. And if you need another copy, I'll send it to you. But you can look in the history of, of our... Of our um, WhatsApp chats, and it's still there. But these are the aspects, these are the teachings of samadhi, of what it is to be in samadhi all the time. Samadhi is that is the revealed equality of the nature of all phenomena. The revealed equality, the equality. So there's no mistake. Everything is equal. And it's our um, mis- interpreting and seeing that some things are stronger than other things and so on and creating and abiding in the in the duality this equality is abiding in non-duality and we have to practice that that becomes part of our our practices what we are learning to do so the samadhi is something that we take with us all the time when we sit on the cushion and we go through our different practices when we go through deity yoga 
or maybe today as we went through the purification practice that maybe during that meditation during that dissolution maybe you had a moment of samadhi of just clarity of peace of non-engagement of just being in the quietude maybe you just had a moment of that and then just imagine taking that and making it more and more and more stronger more wider and deeper and that we are in that state of mind all the time in that samadhi all the time so the more that we do our practices the more that we experience the contemplation and going through all the different you know looking at things the the, the pashana meditation and so on and then we become these deity we become you know this the, this buddha we begin to approach the buddha at the same time we are increasing our levels of samadhi and we take more of that with us each time that we are able to stabilize um what what that accomplishment is in that particular practice so the peace and the quiet that you have now is a level of samadhi the practices that you've done you've all said to me at one time or another yes you know this has really helped me i've made changes the changes you've made are in your samadhi you may not think of it that way but when you begin to think of it that way when you recognize that and you say oh wow this is what it is and now i can I can work with that. I know what I need to do. I can transform things and neutralize things. All this dualistic nature neutralizes so it all becomes equality. It all becomes equal. It's just energy. So this is the revealed equality of the nature of all phenomena. This is samadhi. <clears throat> and then the samadhi leads to the liberation so the samadhi maybe is temporary you know it's why we have this body and we're going through all these practices and so on but the liberation is takes us to the other side we're crossing to the other side we're crossing from being an ordinary human being into being a pardon me a complete human being which is a buddha which is having that Buddha body speech in mind, radiating like the sun for the benefit of all beings. In this life, we may not reach that. In the next life, we may not reach that. In many lives to come, we may not reach that. But we are joyous that we recognize that whatever degree we've, we've reached it now is wonderful, and that we're increasing it today, tomorrow, and the next day, and so on. And if it takes many lifetimes, we will do that. We're doing it for the benefit of others. If I do it for my own selfishness, I'm pulling the rug from underneath my feet, and all my merit at some point will get lost because of the selfishness. Hatred will pop up, ignorance will pop up, jealousy will pop up, and will undo so much of the work that we've done we can fix it we can go back and we can come back to where we were we can find the errors and correct those errors and come back and many of us need to do that we do that because the path is is not always stable for us so we've done that but we need to give ourselves permission to do that and recognize that's part of the process the failure can be the greatest teacher so we need to accept that and to honor that and to use that immediately as soon as we can to uh to correct our way so this is the vajrasattva practice again the confession that i made a mistake i'm sorry for it i'm gonna use the antidote for it i'm gonna neutralize it I'm not going to do it anymore, and I'm going to rely on the practice uh, to help me to stabilize the four powers of Vajrasattva. So this is on to the path of liberation. So the liberation, 
I can't say a whole lot about because it becomes obvious, but it's it's obvious to those who have attained that. Maybe we can have a, a glimpse of it, but to be able to describe it in any way to all of us um, right now, at this point, um, would not be so helpful. We need to be able to recognize, to concentrate on these inexhaustible treasures that we've been talking about, the, the wisdom and the merit. So now we come to point 11, which is the aspiration to the different methods for entering into good actions. I'm going to re repeat that. The aspiration to the different methods of entering into, uh, entering into good actions. So there's many different ways to approach this good actions. And what what's another word for actions? Karma. So good karma to develop good karma, to practice good karma, good actions, that that becomes what we do. You know, we're not just going to sit here dormant. We are going to engage, and our engagements are those actions, are those karmas. And we are, and then we have the results after them. So here is the different methods for entering into the good actions, the good karma. So the first is, seeing the Buddhas and their pure realms. In a single atom, may I see as many pure realms as atoms in the universe. And in each realm, Buddhas beyond all imagining, encircled by all their bodhisattva heirs, along with them, may I perform the actions of enlightenment. So where have we heard that before? Don't we, don't we recite that in our prayers every day when we do the opening prayers and the closing prayers? That we've been saying this for a long time. The question now is, are we recognizing this? Are we recognizing it within ourselves? Are we recognizing it in regard to other beings and so on? And that we see that within an atom are all these Buddhas and all these bodhisattvas all around them. And then each one of these atoms has more Buddhas and more Bodhisattvas and so on. And we see that all this is already a Buddha field. All this is virtuous. All this is pure. But we've been so contaminated with all the negativities, all the confusions, the, the, eight, um, the eight concerns that we go through, the eight worldly concerns, and we're so fixated on those things that we don't see the purity of this. And then to see it, we need to engage in it. We need to be it. It doesn't come to us. We come to it. We open up to it. It is within us. It is who we are. We open ourselves up to realizing that. And that means getting rid of all the obscurations, all the afflictive emotions, all the mental misconceptions and so on that we go through. And that's what all this is to help us to do, to recognize that. So in a single atom, may I see as many pure realms as atoms in the universe. And in each realm, Buddha's beyond imagining, encircled by all their bodhisattva heirs. Along with them, may I perform the actions of enlightenment. So within ourselves, within our room, within our neighborhood, within our region, within the world, and out beyond the world, out into the cosmos. And so on, that all this, we see all this as a Buddha field. This is all a, an appearance. This is all a display of the body, speech, and mind of the Buddha, the primordial Buddha, the primordial Buddha, so pure it's unborn. What is born here is impure, but we need to recognize that that, that birth that we have is just an illusion as well. It's like the image of a movie projector that's projecting something up on a screen. So do we fixate on the image on the screen or what it represents? It's just a temporary image, but it has symbology involved. So the, all this appearance is that symbology. 
So then the next stanza here says, and so in each direction everywhere, even on the tip of a hair, may I see an ocean of Buddhas, all come in past, present, and future, and an ocean of pure realms, and through all oceans of eons, may I enter into enlightened action in each and every one. So this is taking the this phenomenal nature and expressing it in terms that we can relate to, oceans and uh, eons, time, and so on, and, and uh, um, in each direction everywhere, even on the tip of a hair. It's making all these references to physical things that we see, that we understand, and say that, you know, all this is huge. It's more huge than, than we can comprehend. But at the same time, it's all empty of its own nature. It is all phenomenal nature. It all is, it all is, is empty. And it is the appearance of the display of the Dharmakaya, the, the true nature that we have within ourselves that we are all part of and so on. So we can't explain it anymore. You know, that's, and even to explain it that way is, is conceptual because what it is is non-conceptual. We can experience it. And that's what we're, we're trying to do is to go through the commitment of doing these practices in order to have that experience. So we may have the experience in this lifetime. We may have it very simply. We may have it through the elaboration of doing these practices. But um, for most of us, we need the structure of the practices to be able to harness our body, speech, and mind into that one-pointed mindfulness to be able to open up our heart center because this has become, we recognize this through the experience of the heart center. Then the next one is listening to the speech of the Buddhas. Every single word of a Buddha speech, that voice with its ocean of qualities, bears all the purity of the speech of all the Buddhas. Sounds that harmonize with the minds of all living beings may I always be engaged with the speech of the Buddhas. So the speech of the Buddhas is the Dharma. This is the intellectualization of what these appearances are all about. To be able to guide us to be able to process what all this is, seeing it in its empty nature, seeing it as illusion, and then being able to just transcend it perfectly naturally, without any effort, we just transcend into our true nature, into that non-conceptual, non-dual, non-objectified, unelaborated nature of that samadhi. So listening to the speech of the Buddha, listening to the sutras. This, this comes from a sutra, the Avatamsaka Sutra. This Avatamsaka Sutra is one of the most revered of all the sutras, all the utterances of the Buddha. And this sutra ha became the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the genesis, if you will, became the formation of so many of the other teachings of the masters that came after the Buddha. Buddha, they, they would explain what I'm trying to explain here. They would have their way of explaining it and, and they would make a practice out of it, a sadhana out of it and so on. And all that's good. And it's way better than what I can do personally. But we're all pointing at the same thing. We're all saying, this is who you are. This is what you can be. This is, this is what it is. You have to experience it. This is how to do it. That's what the Buddha taught. When the Buddha attained enlightenment, he said, I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you how I got there. And that's what the Dharma teachings are all about. So this is the speech of the Buddha. Every single word of a Buddhist speech, that voice with its ocean of qualities, speaks to everybody. Bears all the purity of the speech of all the Buddhas, sound that harmonize with the minds of all living beings. 
May I always be engaged with the speech of the Buddhas. When we quiet ourselves down, we can feel, we can sense this vibration. We can sense the, the connection that we have. And it's not the sense of the vibration we, we feel like this. It, it, it's a spiritual connection. It's a spiritual vibration, for lack of any better words. And, and through that, we, we recognize the speech of the Buddha. All right, so we'll have to leave it here for today. So today is 10-1. Okay. Any questions or comments? Is this format good, doing the practice in the, in the first part and then doing this uh, Dharma talk in the second part? Yeah, because the primary intention of this these sessions on sunday is the practice i lance i think so um that's my personal opinion i i think it's kind of like putting us into spiritual gym like get like doing the reps versus reading about it like it's like come in and lift the weights now so in my mind yeah um you know and people and i think it's like a nudge right like you're helping us with spiritual growth sometimes doing those reps can be uncomfortable however needed right in order to get the growth and that's what you're doing for so in my mind like as a physical analogy i'm like a coach in the gym is going to say you can push five more pounds and i'm going to push you today and cheer you on and i think that's what that's how i see it i'm like it's a little uncomfortable like the nudging however we have to in order to to get to that next bridge so i like the format very good thank you so we're trying to um uh, create uh breakthroughs you know, to, to, to see the method to attain the breakthroughs. All right, anybody else have a comment? All right. Uh, Lance, I think this is terrific. Thank and you. uh, your commentary makes it worthwhile. Because I've read through this several times, actually. And, you know, it, it, um, it sparks one's imagination, but there's so much more going on as you express it, and that's the good part. Well, good. Thank you. Yes. So it may be uh, an outer explanation. The lamas may go into deeper inner explanations and so on. But uh, so if you had the opportunity to take teachings on this from one of the lamas, uh, you might have a, a deeper experience with it. So, uh, but at least right now we're, we're learning the outer meaning and getting familiar with what this process is. And that by itself is worthwhile. Okay, so we should do a dedication for, for this. So, uh, Mark, if you will, on page 21 in my book is the Dedication Prayer by Lord Jigden Sumgun. So if you will recite that, please, uh, that will complete our, our uh, session today. Dedication Prayer by Lord Jigden Sumgun. Glorious, holy, venerable, precious, kind, root and lineage lamas, Divine Assembly of Vidams and Assemblies of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Yogins, Yoginis, and Dakinis dwelling in the Ten Directions, please hear my prayer. May the virtues collected in the three times by myself and all sentient beings in Samsara and Nirvana and the innate root of virtue not result in the eight worldly concerns, the four causes of Samsara, or rebirth as a Shravaka or Pratyekada Buddha. May all mother sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me and mine, obstruct or sue harm, misleading Mars and the hordes of demons, experience happiness. Mark, your, your microphone went off. 
Okay. May all mother sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me and mine, obstructors who harm misleading Mars and the hordes of demons, experience happiness, be separated from suffering, and swiftly attain unsurpassed, perfect, complete, and precious Buddhahood. By the power of this vast root of virtue, may I benefit, benefit all beings through my body, speech, and mind. May the afflictions of desire, hatred, ignorance, error, Your mic went off again. What the hell's going on here? Give me a moment, please. It's off again. Can you hear me? Now I can't hear you. Can you hear me? By the power of this vast root of virtue, may I benefit all beings through my body, speech, and mind. May the afflictions of desire, hatred, ignorance, arrogance, and jealousy not arise in my mind. May attachment to fame, reputation, wealth, honor, and concern for this life not arise even for a moment. May my mind stream be moistened by loving kindness, compassion and bodhicitta and through that may i become a spiritual master with good qualities equal to the infinity of space may i gain the supreme attainment of ma mudra in this very life may the torment of suffering not arise even at the time of my death may i not die with negative thoughts may i not die confused by wrong view may i not experience an untimely death May I die joyfully and happily in the great luminosity of the mind as such and the pervading clarity of the Dharmata. May I, in any case, gain the supreme attainment of Mahamudra at the time of death or in the bardo. Uh, om. Om. Uh, om. 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 Uh, Oh. May my body, speech, uh, and mind be inseparable. The body, speech, and mind of all the enlightened ones for the benefit of all sentient beings. Thank, thank you very you. much for all participating. Thank everybody on YouTube for uh, joining us. And uh, if you have any questions, you know how to reach us. And we can make sure that uh, your questions are answered, send you whatever material you might need. So thank everybody for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lance. Thank you. See thank you, you again, Lance. Right. <clears throat> thank you so much. All right. See you next week. <clears throat>